Hi guys, good morning and welcome. This is Primus Veku um, and this is Primus Learning. And you know, um, I'm here again to do one of our videos. This video is going to be, um, you know, an interesting one because it will be step-by-step -step teaching you how to nail your technical interviews. A lot of people have asked me yeah, uh, about you know, how to take interviews. They want to hear from an interviewer's perspective. So I've been uh, interviewing with organizations for a long time. Um, you know, I've worked for Fortune 500 companies as a consultant, a senior consultant, a manager, and of course, um, going towards a director role. Um, and, you know, in all my years of experience, I've, I've done different things, right? I've architected and led teams, I've started up projects from uh, the start to the end. Uh, I've hired client, uh, you know, uh, consultants to work with me. I've built teams, and and all that experience. Um, I've had to interview different people. Have I've had to build different systems. I've had to, you know, work as a cloud engineer. Um, a DevOps engineer, I've had to lead DevOps teams, technical teams that build and implement systems, uh, you know, across across different platforms. And and my experience and, and all that has taught me a lot of things when it comes to, to the job market, when it comes to hiring and what um, interviewers are looking for. So the first thing to understand is that um, when someone is posting a job, they're posting a job for a particular reason. That's the first thing you have to understand. If you don't understand that, it will be very difficult for you to nail um, a, a job, a, a technical job interview, right? The, the first steps are usually just, you know, formalities, just to make sure that you're the right candidate. Then you have the technical interview, or what the, some people say, uh, the hiring manager, right? It's the, the technical interview that really determines whether you get the job into the, into the IT space, right? And for those who are new, or even if you're changing your roles. And so uh, today I want us to talk about how to nail your technical interviews from an interviewer's perspective, right? So I've been interviewing, as I mentioned earlier, and I have a lot of experience as far as that is concerned. And what do I look for um, when I'm when I'm going out to to hire a candidate? What 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 do I really want, right? Um, uh, is the question the interviewee or the person who is being interviewed needs to answer for themselves to be able to 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 get a, a good in interview, right? And so uh, we will be sharing, I think, um, four points here. Uh, let me share my screen real quick. Uh, these are the four points that we'll be sharing. So the tell me about yourself question. This is usually the most interesting part of it, guys. You, so it, that, anyway, that's the first step we're coming to it. Then there is, uh, I'll talk about DevOps interviews and how you know, you can nail DevOps interviews, specifically for those who are DevOps engineers. We we'll talk about AWS architect interviews, those who uh, want to become uh, uh, AWS architect. So how to nail those types of, of, of interviews and interviews in general when it comes to data engineering, machine learning, artificial intelligence, and all that. And then the study strategy that are that are um, interview focused. We want to look at study strategies that are interview focused, right? But for all types of uh, um, jobs, you know, DevOps, AWS architects, cloud computing in general, and all that, right? So these are the things that we want to. Um, I want us to focus on today, guys. So the very first thing is the "tell me about yourself" question. This question is the most important question. Normally, when you get into an interview, you know the formalities, um, the person interviewing you, 
so the interviewer will ask, you know, introduce themselves just as I did, say, hey, I work for this company um, for this number of years or maybe blah, 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 right? And so um, we're hiring for this position. They will describe the position. Um, and we're looking for somebody who has worked in the space or who has experience in it. And so can you tell me a little bit about your experience so that we see if it really matches, um, you know, he wants to determine if your skill sets, the experience that you have matches, you know, the role they're hiring for. You see where you need to understand the, the mindset of those putting out that job. They have a specific thing they're looking for. And so sometimes when you get rejections, don't think that the rejections are because you don't know. Maybe your skill sets do not match exactly the, the, the role that they, they are interviewing for. And so if you are rejected for an in, uh, you know by a company, it doesn't mean that you don't know. So when I hear people talking about rejections and I'm like, oh my goodness, what is this person talking about? I get rejections, but I have a... Ton of, a ton of skills when it comes to um, this space, right? To the IT space, I have a ton of skills, but I still get rejected because sometimes your skill sets do not match. Maybe you have skill sets that are even above the role. You have skill sets that do not particularly, are not particularly focused on that role. You have skill sets that are a little bit shifted from, you know, the core thing that the, the, the interviewers are looking for. And so the tell me about your, yourself question is an opportunity for you to to sell yourself it's an opportunity for you to sell yourself to the interviewer so what is the interviewer looking for here they are looking for somebody to trace a history of their job experiences to trace a history of their you know their experience their whole experience that they have had over the years so you want to go back on your resume what you have on your resume right you want to go right from where your job starts and say hey i started off my career as a maybe business analyst and i worked for company abc i was doing this and this and then i had an opportunity maybe um you know to move to a different role within that company it was a devops engineer role or a cloud architect role and i was fortunate you know for the company to train me and i moved to that role or i trained at this thing institution and i you know got hired as a junior devops engineer in within my same company because i was um, you know, the opportunity was better than what I was currently doing. And so I moved to the next role. And in this role, I was performing these tasks. The organization was uh, at that moment, maybe transitioning uh, into a dev DevOps um, automation system. And I was tasked with you know, uh, part of that automation to so build part of that automation out. And so I helped uh, build a CICD pipeline for the organization and all that. When that project was completed, I had a better opportunity in another company and I moved to blah, 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 blah company where I am currently working as a senior DevOps engineer. In this role, you know, um, I'm performing the following tasks, right? I'm, I'm taking care of this. The, the, actually, the application is a supply chain engineering uh, application, and we are building an analytics platform on top of it. And so uh, I'm tasked with building data pipelines and automated systems so that um, the, you know the data scientists that are in uh, the data science team can be able to get data that comes from the supply chain engineering team. The data is stored in a Redshift cluster somewhere in AWS. And so I've, I've been tasked with building those systems so that, um, that that process is seamless for uh, this team. And so, you know, you, you've you traced a history of your experience and, you know, the interviewer is already seeing your experience. He He's like, he, he's feeding into your experience. He he gets a little bit of what your experience has been. He's already seeing some tools that you're using. You, you, you did not just come and you were naming tools, right? You were talking about a journey that you've had and you traced that journey. It's a historical perspective, um, you know, of, of your career, of the career path you've had. And so you kind of just illuminating your career path a little bit so that the person who is interviewing you can see through it, right? And see if you're a better fit for, for, for the role. And so once you've done that, what happens? The interviewer is like, oh, wow, you mentioned this, uh, that you worked on a CICD pipeline. Can you elaborate a little bit on, you know, that pipeline? What was your experience like? So you draw the interviewer to 
to this kind of thing where he focuses his interview on what you have done. And so you have the ability to talk on your strengths. You have the ability, you know, to, to talk more on what you've worked on. It could be that, you know, um, that experience is just experience of projects that you've been building. If you have built CICD pipelines and you mentioned particular projects that you've worked on, you did not just mention some 3 tier applications, some this, you, you, you were mentioning that it was um, maybe a data analytics platform that the supply chain team, supply chain engineering team was maybe um, reworking or was optimizing on, or they had this goal of, you know, making sure that data science uh, uh, teams are able to get data without any stress, without any, so build data pipelines, right? So they, they were trying to remove manual processes from the whole, um, you know, data team getting, data science team getting data from, from their data lake or from their redshift clusters or from wh wherever, right? And so the interviewer sees you in action and he's able to figure out, hey, and ask more questions, right? So with that type of, of uh, tell me about yourself or uh, you know that type of uh, explanation, the interviewer is able now to focus on you, on your experience rather than just asking abstract questions or rather than, than just looking at your resume and asking abstract questions. And before you present a focal point, before you focus on something, Remember, you have to talk about projects, right? Uh, what, what, all what I've been saying is about particular projects that you did for the engineering team or for the supply chain team and so on. And before you focus on it, you want to make sure that the job description matches that, that project that you're using for that particular job, right? And so if their main focus on, was a CICD pipeline, your project, the, the project experience that you've had for CICD pipeline should be like the main thing that you discuss in that tell me about yourself phase. It shouldn't be more than three minutes, guys. More than three minutes, you are you are just overkilling it. You've done it too much. It should be two to three minutes and you're done with that tell me about yourself part. So that, you know, you give the interviewer the opportunity to also ask questions about the projects that you've done. So once you've exposed all of those guys, uh, it is then time for you to listen, to let the interviewer ask you some questions about the projects and the experience you've had. And so they can ask you, can you tell me about this, the CICD pipeline you mentioned or the, the data pipeline that you mentioned? How did, how was that data pipeline built? Then you will need to go into the details of the data pipeline, say uh, the source, of the data was maybe uh, this particular process, maybe um, a Kubernetes process that was running, fetching data from some place, or it was a, you know, the supply chain team had a, 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 some hardware or some software, sorry, that, um, you know, got the data directly from the data, from the warehouse, the real warehouse, um, product warehouse, right? And then once that data is gotten, it is moved through this, this, this to this particular place or to some on-premise uh, environment. Uh, files are stored at random or CSV files stored uh, in, in an on-premise environment. Then you are tasked to moving all those files to AWS S3, processing them into a staging environment using maybe Lambda functions, using maybe glue and other things, right? Uh, Glue is an interesting one, guys. Glue is usually one of those tools that um, it's one of those tools that data data engineers in AWS or data scientists in AWS and so on and so forth they use a lot. Glue has become very very useful in terms of um, and the AWS platform uh, analytics tool tools that help in data uh, data processing and so on. You, you could hear of glue you could hear of um emr clusters you could hear of you know different things um uh, that that you use in in aws and so you want to trace that you want to talk about uh, how those processes are built and then um where the output files are stored maybe there's processing of that data into parquet and then it's stored somewhere else in a data lake from where data engineers need to uh fetch from and so 
that the whole of that process, you need to discuss it. How do they access it? How do those data scientists access it? They access it, maybe they are, because they probably are operating from another AWS account. And so you, you want to talk about cross account access, you know, those assumed roles um, and, and, and so on and so forth. So those are some of the details that uh, an interviewer will be interested in. They will be interested in knowing how the data engineers are able to access the data which is found in a different account, which is found in a Redshift cluster in a different account, maybe using service roles. How are those service roles able to, to help to cross account access? How do you establish that cross account access in AWS and so on and so forth? So those are details that you will go into. If, if you were talking typically of a DevOps uh, project that is basically software applications. You can talk of those CI-CD pipelines. What kind of CI-CD pipelines did you build? Maybe uh, a pipeline like GitHub Actions or Jenkins and so on. And within that pipeline, right, uh, what, are some of, what are some of the intricacies? So a pipeline has to be uh, something. You're building something to deploy somewhere. So maybe you're deploying in Kubernetes in AWS. So you're dealing with EKS. And so it has to be an end-to-end -end project. When you're talking about a project, it has to be an end-to-end -end project. I was talking to uh, a, a, well, a candidate who could not who was talking about the CICD pipeline? I was trying to understand from that candidate what is the what is the platform where your application is running. They didn't understand it. They were telling me GitHub Actions. They were telling me Jenkins. But where wh where is that pipeline deploying the application on? Is it deploying in a server in an EC2 instance or in in an ECS um, cluster or in an EKS cluster, where is the application deployed? So it has to be an end-to-end -end strategy, right, that you discuss. And so you can start from the version control environment, um, talk about the various, um, you know, the various environments where it's deployed, whether it's QA, whether it's, whether it's dev, and the strategies that you use to deploy to those different environments. You could talk about tests that are carried out as in within that process. Are there vulnerability scans? Is there a sonar cube thing in front of it? What are some of the those things um, that you really do, right? It's, it's basically the things that a typical DevOps engineer would do. And so you want to know those things. And Another thing is that when I hear people, DevOps engineers talking about DevOps roles and DevOps interviews, they are so focused on software applications that they forget that all of the, the software applications have different parts. They are talking only of deployments. DevOps engineers do not do only uh, deployments using CI CD pipelines, guys. Yes, it's Automation is part of their work. It's part of the big, big, big thing they do. But you have to also to consider that there's a whole ag it's a whole agile frame framework thing. DevOps and the agile methodology is all that relationship that matters. So it's all about maybe connecting your GitHub environment to your Jira environment, where you are able to to use stories. And, and merge, once you do a merge in, in your GitHub environment or in your GitHub environment, it reflects in your Jira environment, right? Such that there's that transparency between the Agile team and the DevOps team, between the, the various teams, the development team and the operations team, right? You see that relationship that exists there. So DevOps is typically not just uh, software projects that are that are delivered. It involves different types of pipelines. You're, as a DevOps engineer, you could be doing just data pipelines. So as a DevOps engineer, you don't have to study only CI, CD pipelines and all that. You need to study Python. You need to know a little bit of Python, guys, so that you are able to build some of those scripts. You need to know batch scripting so that you build some scripts. You need to understand AWS, services in AWS, how S3 works, how Glue works, how Lambda works, because you use some of those processes to enhance your pipelines, to build your pipelines, to make your pipelines really good. You need to fetch data from databases in data pipelines. And so you need to understand SQL. You have to take time to learn SQL. You have to take time to learn databases. So it's not all about just, you know, learning some tools and all that. It's a whole process, guys. So DevOps interviews, you need to be well prepared when it comes to um, things that are that are linked to automation, right? Not just automation, but all other things that are 
uh, interwoven. And also when you're talking about solutions architecting, remember DevOps and the solutions architecting roles are beginning to to merge together. They are coming together real close. Organizations now use DevOps engineers as solutions architects and use solutions architects as DevOps engineers. And so while interviewing for a solutions architect role, which is this third point that we're seeing here, you should be able to, you know, to, to, to figure out DevOps processes within AWS. That makes you more marketable in the eyes of um, uh, an interviewer. And so uh, as a solutions architect, there are big picture things that you, you have to consider. You have to consider security when talking about anything. Whatever you're building in AWS or in the cloud has to have security at the back of your mind. Those are the best practices that AWS um, under, underscores, right? So security, performance, cost optimization, um, um, availability, uh, redundancy. So you, any system that you're building has to be very redundant. It has to be secure, robust, so that um, you know, when you are talking about an architecture, when you're putting an architectural framework, you take all those things into consideration. And so as a solutions architect, you know, you need to talk about particular projects, maybe uh, a data pipeline project. As a DevOps engineer, you can talk about it. You see, you see the beauty of knowing both, right? The beauty of, of interacting with both. As a solutions architect, you can talk uh, you can refer to a project that you did, which is a data pipeline, which will expose a whole components of things, right? You can talk about migration projects where you migrated stuff into AWS. Migration projects is not just using the application ser migration service in AWS to migrate databases to AWS. No, you can migrate databases. You can, mi you can migrate applications to EKS, to a um, ECS, and so on and so forth. You can migrate data into S3 and move it and make it available. You can migrate different things to AWS. So when we talk of migration, it's not just the application service uh, that you're using. The, the, the migration application service that you're using to do your migrations, right? Uh, so you can talk about data pipelines. You can talk about access to data sources. You can talk about access to applications, access to tools, because, you know, how do you grant access to people? So you have to understand your IAM very well. IAM is one of the best tools that once you master, you become a master. IAM VPCs. So how is your application even... Uh, secured in terms of networks, networking, right? You need to put it in particular places, in a subnet, in whether the application is internet facing or not. You need, you need to critically design that and figure out how to build it correctly. Also, you need to think of cost optimization. We have all of these videos we have videos on our YouTube channel that are talking about all of these things, data pipelines, access controls. We have uh, videos on cost optimization, which means a video that shows you how to help an organization when it comes to optimizing on its cost, right? We have tools that we've mentioned. We have scripts that we've even written on our platform, guys. Go check them out and you will be amazed at what the content that we have, right? Um, and, and so, as a solutions architect, you want to really help your, your you know, in your interview, sorry, you want to be able to, to, to make the, um, the interviewer see that you are not only the high level person, you understand the details. You can actually do implementation when it comes to, uh, to, to architecting, right? You can, you can implement solutions that you build. You can, um, you, you, you can put diagrams together that link things. So as a solutions architect, you need to understand all those intricacies. You need to understand the networking components, the, the database component, you have to understand the application component and so on and so forth. And even the automation part. So, um, you know, for instance, if you're building uh, infrastructure using Terraform, right? How do you, how do you, uh, you know, how do you provision the resources using Terraform? Do you just run it from a local environment or you, would you build a pipeline that deploys your store, the Terraform um, things that you've built, right? That provisions resources using a CI CD pipeline. You can build it. And I have a video up there on our channel that shows you how to structure your Terraform environment, guys. It is, it, these are, these are the things that, you know, uh, uh, 
interviewers are looking for. They are not looking for tools. You, you just coming and telling them tools. They need you to tell them. How do you structure your, your, your Terraform environment? How do you structure your Terraform repository, right? Um, do you just, do you build modules and then under modules, like the folder structure, how do you structure them? And such that, you know, it doesn't just become so complex. How do you maintain security or the security of your Terraform environment? How do you maintain, you know, uh, um, the complexity such that as, as the, the infrastructure grows, as many services increase, how do you manage complexity, right? There are organizations that are struggling with their Terraform environment and they don't know which strategy to take. Um, please go watch that video and you see, you know, how uh, we're helping to structure it. And that would definitely help you in your interviews. I always, always ask that question. How do you structure your Terraform environment? So another question I always ask is about access. When it comes to access, guys, it is absolutely important. You can't deal with AWS without access. Most of the issues you'll be having will be dealing with access, access issues. You know, uh, maybe a role not being able to access data or a service not being able to access something or a user not being able to access. How do you maintain and grant access? Just the needed access are not kind of overly open access which is not needed right which will open your 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 account to security issues how do you maintain the security of your aws account if you go and you're managing 100 aws accounts how do you maintain all of those you have to get alerting systems you have to have a monitoring systems built on top of it right so it's a task to build a monitoring system on top of some of the work you have in AWS. Maybe you've built a project, uh, the project is automated, but there's no monitoring system built on top of it. How do you maintain that? You can talk about projects that are that you build that are just monitoring projects, right? Or, you know, a lot of projects that you can talk about. So you don't need to be, uh, you know, worried about the types of project because all of these things that we have on our channel, projects for you guys. All right. And the next thing I want to talk about is the study strategy. You know, one of the reasons why people do not have, you know, fail in interviews is because they don't study the right way, guys. Absolutely. A very important point. Most people, they just study, they just read, like just read theories and just practice things. They, they don't link the stuff they practice right? You have to study in a specific way. All right, let's say you, you've you studied DevOps, you know DevOps very well, you know the tools, you know all of it, and you know how all those processes work. You can talk about some projects. But if you don't study things that are related to DevOps that are not DevOps entirely, you'll not be able to understand a question that is asked to you by a senior person who understands systems, right? You, you'll be lost somewhere. So take, for instance, if somebody asks you about how you fed, how you get data from one run place to, to, you know, to get a process, your Kubernetes systems, or to get your, the applications that are running on your Kubernetes working from, from um, running correctly, or how do you fetch data from this place, from this type of database, and so on and so forth. You need to be able to understand SQL. You need to be able to understand databases, the structure of databases, how databases are built, what databases are made up made of right how databases are managed and all that you need to understand um uh, performance of databases because you'll be dealing with all those things uh, every day the types of databases that are out there there are different types of databases that are out there today and they continue to grow right um uh, things are moving data is becoming so huge that to manage it is, you know, something else. So the concept of big data is beginning to take shape, right? And so, you know, you need to be able to understand those concepts and know that organizations now are dealing with a lot of data and some data lakes, some S3 environments um, are, are becoming huge, huge, huge places where organizations store their data. You need to understand those types of data stores. You need to understand uh, clusters, uh, Redshift environment or data warehousing. The, the difference between data warehousing and data uh, bases and, and data stores and so on and so on. And the types of data that's out there, there's data that's uh, I mean, just in the form of key value pairs, there's data that are different types of objects, there's data that is videos, there's data that is, you know, you need to understand all of those intricacies 
And then you need a little language like Python, like, you know, some scripting stuff that you can use to manipulate and deal with data, right? So SQL is important. Python is important. You cannot be anything in IT without SQL because everywhere you go, you see data. IT is all about information. And information, you get information from databases using SQL. So you're able to talk to a database using SQL. Database understands you through the SQL that you tell it, that you write to it, right? And so SQL is absolutely important when it comes to uh, uh, your life as a solutions architect, as a DevOps engineer. So you have to draw a, a study plan, which gives you the opportunity to study Python, to study um, uh, SQL in relation to your job. You want to study it in relation to your job. So once you're studying SQL, you want it to be functional. And so, uh, for instance, you can study SQL and use that SQL to get to 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 get data from uh, uh, S3. Use that SQL to get data from a database. You maybe pull up a a SageMaker instance build a SageMaker instance and use Python and SQL to run it and get fetch data from S3. That way you're learning. And you are also in the process learning some Python packages. There are a lot of Python packages out there um, that become so useful to you that you cannot undermine when you are dealing with all of these things, guys. And so in that process, you learn some of the packages, you learn Python, you learn how it functions, how to use Python and do work that could be done um, with other things, but through a, a really tough process. Um, so to study, you have to study in relation to whatever you're doing, whether you are a solutions architect, or you're a DevOps engineer, you have to study with that focus in mind, right? And so study the right way, dedicate time for those tools that look external to your, to your, to your career path, to your role, but are absolutely important. Study networking, the network protocols, the various network protocols that are out there, because Data moves in a particular way. Uh, objects move in a particular way. Packets move in a particular way. And so you need to study to know those protocols such that when you see TCP, open a TCP port, open an HTTP port, open this type of port, a UDP port, you know exactly what that means. And so you, you're not just doing things in AWS because you want to do them. And so if you don't study that networking, if you don't study those components, it will not make a lot of sense to you. And you'll just be that kind of guy who is just, you know, just doing things because she's learned them without really understanding them. And so also you want to study the database component, you want to study the networking component, you want to, talk, you want to study the application components, also study the, the languages, know what front-end developers do, study the roles rather, know what front-end developers do, and even look into them. Basics of front-end development will not kill you. Basics of backend development will not kill you. So that in a project, when a backend developer is talking, you understand. You are not shivering. You are not. You understand what they are talking about. Once a front end developer is talking, you understand what they are talking about. Once a network engineer is talking, you are firm. You know what they are talking about. That ensures growth in your career, guys. That ensures a certain stamina, a certain stability when you are even interviewing people, um, you see their profiles, you're like, oh, no, anybody can interview me. A machine learning person can interview me because you've studied a, a little bit of uh, a sage maker. You know a little bit of what it takes to do machine learning. You know a little bit of big data terms, big data engineering solutions, big data tools, big data uh, packages, and so on and so forth. And so, guys, you want to be a holistic individual when it comes to IT. You don't want to just be uh, so focused and limited. Of course, limitation, uh, being limited in one thing will help you know it better and get in. Uh, but once you get into that job, you want to learn, guys. You want to become a big boy in the space. And trust me with this, you will grow your career. And of course, you uh, even if you lose your job today, tomorrow, you're getting another one because you are an, uh, a candidate who has value, who brings value to an organization. These are the points I wanted to discuss with you guys. Um, I hope this helps uh, somebody out there. Please leave your comments. Uh, leave suggestions of topics you want me to cover. Uh, this was not technical today. It was just to discuss 
you know, how to nail your technical interviews. Ask me any questions. I'll be there to respond um, and also share your thoughts, right? Your thoughts with us, help us uh, improve on what we're doing uh, so that we can bring you more content. Also, please subscribe to our channel and share our videos so that um, we can as well grow uh, as we try to help you to grow. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Thank you.